Hey everybody, this is Steve, and next week something historic is happening. The Holy and Great Council. And because this is such a historic event, we're taking a break from our summer break to help explain why this is so important and what exactly it means for us as believers and Christians. To help me, I'm joined by Deacon John Crisavis, an author and theological advisor to His All Holiness Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew. Greetings, Steve. It's great to be with you and everyone who's watching. A few months ago, His Eminence Metropolitan Sabas of Pittsburgh joined me to explain why exactly councils are so important to the life of the church. If you missed the episode, check it out. We talked about the first great council in the life of the church, the Apostolic Council of Jerusalem, held in around the year 50 AD. Yet it wasn't until 325 AD that the entire church gathered for what we now call the First Ecumenical Council. In all, between 325 and 787 AD, the Church gathered for seven ecumenical councils and clarified the faith in the face of dangerous mistakes. For instance, the First Council proclaimed that Jesus Christ is both fully human and fully divine, the eternal Son of God, which is critical for our salvation, as Steve has previously discussed. And the Seventh proclaimed that Icons are a crucial part of our worship because of the reality of the Incarnation. That the Church isn't merely spiritual because Christ took on our flesh and sanctified creation. There are even two additional councils which some Orthodox Christians consider to be ecumenical. The Eighth Council confirmed the Creed, the Church's statement of faith, and condemned any changes to it. And the Ninth Council affirmed the practice of hesychasm, something my friend Sister Vasa helped me explain back in episode 76. So the Seventh Council was held back in the year 787, and the Ninth Council was held between the years 1341 and 1351. As you can tell from today's date, it's been either several hundred years, or depending on how you count things, over a thousand years since the last ecumenical council. It's been, at the very least, centuries since all of the local Orthodox churches have gathered in one place, have gathered in love and solidarity to govern the church. Father John, you've been heavily involved in the process of organizing the council. Can you help us better understand what's happening? Well, unlike certain periods from the past, at this point in history, our biggest challenge isn't dogmatic. The council isn't being assembled to address heresy or theological errors. Our biggest challenge as a church isn't defining our faith, it's living it. It's no accident that the very first document on the Council website is titled The Mission of the Orthodox Church in Today's World. Because this is really our task as Christians, to make Christ present in our lives and then also the lives of our friends and neighbors, to understand the language of our time and use it to speak the timeless truth of the Gospel. It's the reason we at Y2AM put so much effort into not simply explaining the faith and the church in clear, easy to understand ways, but also encouraging people to live the faith, to live orthodoxy, to develop a real and deep relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, a relationship that changes the way we see ourselves and others, a relationship that's visible in and developed by the way we love our neighbor, the way we live the struggles of the ascetic life, the way we pray, the way we are baptized into Christ and become His body by receiving His body in the Divine Liturgy. A relationship that will transform us into the saints God has made us to be. The Greek word for council is synodos, synod, which literally means coming together on a common road or common journey. Of course, we know the destination of this journey, it's Christ Himself and His eternal kingdom. Yet, this journey has many challenges and struggles, things that we can't handle as isolated individuals. And there are things that we can't handle as isolated ethnic churches either. Our goal of witnessing to Christ, to the reality of His crucifixion and resurrection, to the presence of His kingdom can only be accomplished if we act together as the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. And that starts by coming together as one body in the Holy and Great Council. 
And even though I won't physically attend the council, like most of you out there, it's important to keep in mind that we all still need to play a part in it. Just as we pray for our bishops during every divine liturgy, we should pray for them now, as much as we can, as they prepare for this critical work. And we should take steps in our own lives to put our faith into practice and live out our relationship with Christ each and every day. Because the Orthodox Church does indeed have a mission in the world today, and we, as those called to put on Christ, each have our own important part to play in that mission. And that mission is to work with Christ for the life of the world, to defeat death in all its forms, to transcend the petty divisions that tear our world apart, whether social or economic or political, for all creation to be united with God in His kingdom. And that starts here, in this life, in the ways we choose to act, in the world, in the ways we stand for justice, offer mercy, embody God's unconditional love. Because whether or not we choose to walk on this common road, this common journey to God's heavenly kingdom is up to us. So let's be the bee and join the work of the Holy and Great Council. Be the bee and live orthodoxy. Remember to like and subscribe and share. I'll see you all in September. Thanks to our supporters on Patreon who helped make this episode possible. To support the creation of more Orthodox Christian content, please visit patreon.com slash y2am.